Well, here we are at the supercomputing 2010, and this high points computing area has been going on and growing for the last 20 odd years. It's great that Platinum has been participating in this for 18 years, and we see tremendous progress. When we first joined in Oregon 1993, it was quite a small place, a lot of uh, uh, strange people doing strange things. But now, HPC is everywhere. You know, in all different fields, all over the world, even the number one computer is from China. How can you imagine that? So this field is contributing more and more to the world economy, to the uh, uh, advancement of the science and technology. And I believe it's a wellspring. A lot of technologies that are now becoming widely adopted in the banner of the uh, cloud computing for all the enterprises and service providers. This is a very exciting time. Well, I mean, looking back, it's just amazing. When we started the company in 1992, I had a hard time telling people what a cluster is. They thought it was a high availability cluster with one computer backing up the other. Or they thought it might be a cluster bomb, right? So nowadays, people don't talk about clusters because it's so much given. They get into hotter and newer topics called the grid. Oh, that's passe. Now it's cloud. But it's all the same theme of using a whole bunch of commodity workstations, server boxes running Windows and Linux, and a whole bunch of these husky dogs to do the elephant job of supercomputing. Now it's not just supercomputing to do the elephant job of enterprise computing, clean up the mess in the data centers, transforming from client-server computing to this cloud computing. Now integrated, don't know where it is, you give it the access, all the power you add, you want, of course you have to pay for it, right? Cloud? What is cloud? I don't know. Everybody uh, trying to guess what cloud is. Dark cloud, white cloud, big cloud, floating cloud. But is that hype? I believe there's some substance behind it. I think this is probably the biggest invention in computing and the business model of computing in the last 30 years. The last one before cloud was really this small dinky cluster. A cluster is a fundamental concept of lashing together a few commodity devices, workstations, and servers to create a bigger computer. And that's the start point of distributed computing. One can say cloud is the end point of distributed computing, where things are so distributed, and but it's so accessible through internet, that it represents the democratization and popularization and mainstreaming of HPC. So if you think about the word HPC, it's Give the concept is very high performance, esoteric, you no, know, maybe in the cloud, right? In fact, this methodology of using computing to study nature, to design products, to optimize businesses, to have entertainment of internet games, all these things are very you know, broadly applicable. It's just that the HPC applications used 20, 30 years ago is very narrow, but nowadays the trend is that these technologies of using high capabilities for computing, for data processing, is getting anywhere. You look at Google. Google search, is that high performance computing? You bet. I mean, how can you search the entire internet of all the sites for all the keywords and words you can get? You cannot do that on your PC, on your mainframe even, but you can do it in cloud. Another concept that is a bit confused about cloud is that if you wash away the hype, Cloud represents the architecture of client services, and it does not have to only apply to Google, our external data center. It can apply the concept and architecture to the enterprise IT, to data centers. It basically is giving you the idea of breaking down the client server silos where applications are locked down and dedicated on the specific servers, resulting in very complex data center environments very low utilization and high expense in babysitting all these server silos. Cloud is an architecture to suggest that you integrate all these resources, that you deliver applications as services, that you virtualize all these IT, including applications, so the user just use the application without knowing and use them as services. Now, services, that's the essence of cloud computing, because every industry that becomes mature is a service industry. Even the physical industry where you take a plane ride, 
The plane is very complicated. The engines are very sophisticated. They have to really fly it around the uh, along the route near the cities in case there's accident. But for you, you are just getting a service. You get a smooth ride from one place to another. It's predictable service. You pay for the service, and you can even choose a class of services. If you look at computing, look at IT industry. We are at the lessons, at the best, and we have been operating in the Stone Age. What, you own your computers, right? You run your own computer, run your own servers, run your own applications, you must be crazy. You don't own the planes. You don't even have to own your cars, just to take public transportation to save the energy and keep the green, right? But the point is that IT industry is now entering into a mature stage of industry. It's not like the auto industry, just like the transportation industry, in the sense that computing and applications will be delivered as services at low cost, you'll be better accessible, doing more and more interesting things. The range of applications, because of enablement of cloud computing, is going to grow 10, 100 times. And this is now the renaissance of IT. So, cloud is about services. Now, what is the implication of IT use? I think the most important implication is to enable those people who never think about computing, who never bought big computers, who didn't even have the budget to do a lot more computing because it makes it so much more accessible and low cost. Now, it's not to say that cloud is easy. I think we're still at the beginning of the cloud era with the architecture, with the systems uh, environment and especially the management layer figured out. Because if you look at the cloud systems, supposedly the resources are the same, right? The servers are servers, storage are storage, interconnect are interconnect. And supposedly are there to run existing applications, of course, plus new applications. So really what defines cloud? What's really fundamentally new in cloud is this layer of management software that virtualize and integrate all these resources, just like the flip side of VMware, right? To create one computer out of many, and then you create a cloud of computers around the world on the internet that together deliver wider and wider variety of patients as services to the users. So in that sense, the management layer, the operating system for the cloud, is about the most complex system software you're ever gonna see. Because on the one hand, it, it needs to make all these resources look easy and simple to the applications. It needs to ensure the service level applications, yet it needs to be able to integrate all these heterogeneous, diverse innovation of hardware resources and still fit into a wide variety of corporate data center environments. That's a very large set of challenges that this industry faces, and I believe a source of great innovations over the next 10 years to come. Like what? What innovations? Uh, the, what, what innovations? The, cloud, the innovation in the management, in the service delivery of the uh, cloud services and applications. Integrating all the resources and supporting all the applications. That layer of cloud OS, the management of the cloud, the virtualization of all the resources, the delivery of all the services, that layer of software is where the most exciting innovation lies in cloud computing.